Listeners and subscribers, hope all is well. We're going to dive right into today's content. It's really uh, more of a rant than anything, kind of just an extemporaneous, off-the-cuff uh, type deal. I'm going to be talking more about this Smolay thing because I, I don't want this to just slip away. I think there's something very important here that uh, we should be paying attention to. What we should be looking at is how we're conditioned. And again, I, I, I talked about in another video about how Smolay gave us this golden opportunity to show how these agent provocateurs and uh, bad actors artificially inflame rhetoric. And if they can't um, twist an organic story uh, or find one to twist, they'll just fabricate one altogether. And I think this is what we're seeing here with the Smolay deal. Okay, and this is how we're conditioned. It's a long-term agenda over a period of time with the with with what appears to be isolated incidents that are actually part of this campaign. Okay, and it's to warp the perception of certain people depending on you know what the what's going Going on, whether it's politics or something in sports or um, some kind of other psychological operation. Okay, you got to ask the question: Why was it uh, Trump supporters? Right? I think this is somewhat of a reiteration of Christine Blasey Ford. Right? There were a lot of uh, holes in her stories, and there was a lot of questions that needed to be asked, and uh, we didn't get those, uh, or at least the we didn't get those from the media as we're getting it now. And remember, it was the alternative media that kind of uh, shifted gears and and eventually forced the mainstream media to change their narrative and start uh, start covering these facts. It was the due diligence of the Chicago PD also. So uh, let's give credit where credit is due. But, you know, with Blasey Ford, um, the, it, the narrative did have undertones of politics, of course, but it wasn't inflaming the racial debate. That was more the Me Too uh, movement. But this is how these things are fairy. Depending on what kind of initiative they want to push, you will have what you saw with Smollett or you'll have what you saw with Blasey Ford, you know. And like I said, there were holes in what she had to say, but there wasn't as questioned as much in the mainstream media. And that's sort of what counts because it reaches so many people. But I do want to say I think it is nice that the alternative media was able to make a shift in, in enough people's consciousness where they started to look at this at a different angle and initially it didn't pass the smell test to some but uh they gave in and they didn't go with their their better instincts if we don't look at these as isolated incidents and we look at these as um incidents on a timeline you could look at these and turn it around and go to show how uh th this is how these things these campaigns are perpetuated and you can show the common person this you can try to walk them uh through it you know, there is one thing I do strive to do, and I fail pretty regularly at it, and that's try to communicate how difficult it can be to try to disseminate information uh, to a wide range of audience. Some people are strictly religious, some people are strictly political, some people, they only watch sports, you know, you, so you can see how difficult it can be to uh, encompass this uh, audience, a, a wide-ranging audience, right? So when you speak, you don't want to feel like you're leaving out uh, any elements, but you know, when it's extemporaneous and off the cuff, you're going to miss some things. And one of, the, one of the things we need to do is to take out the time to make sure we can educate another individual who doesn't share our, our views or be able to have a conversation with them. Because now increasingly more what we're seeing is we can't have a conversation anywhere in the middle ground. We see more um, aggression. We see more uh, dissension in conversations. It's it's either left uh, or right. It's either one end of the spectrum or the other. Assuming these people are already informed um, and knowing what you're talking about, I think for the most part, rather than preaching to the choir, you should be trying to aim your information at individuals who don't uh, know typically the same things that you do. But I think most people, just just, just getting back to the Smolay deal, I think most people looking at this can agree that there's probably something else here. I mean, we have to ask why why the story was, you know, MAGA hat wearing Trump supporters. I brought that up before. We have to ask why uh, Cory Booker and Kamala Harris was so quick to uh, jump on to create a narrative, right? That this was a modern day lynching attempt. Uh, so quick to create a narrative, but very slow on the uptake when it came to retracting some of their statements, walking them back, or even addressing the Smollett deal um, at all. 
okay and that is one way that maybe you can see how political level operatives are implicated here okay and i'm there's other people who have done a lot better job than i ever could linking you know those two to smollett all you have to do really is scratch the surface and you start to uncover some some rather unsettling scenarios okay you start to uncover some rather unsettling scenarios scenarios that actors and celebrities politicians and musicians you know all, all these these people are employed by um higher ups the puppet masters if you will now we're not talking about necessarily people who, who control uh, a lot or factions of deep state but we're talking about if if this guy was put to a task right if this Malay um, was put to the task by somebody higher than him let's say you know Kamala Harris or Booker okay or, or, or both of them you know maybe they paid him or, or leveraged some kind of a celebrity type deal maybe they'd get him some more traction uh, or some more attention or something like that they would be the puppet masters and he would be the puppet okay and and then the the individuals that he employed right supposedly paid thirty five hundred dollars to uh they would be his puppets as well so you can just you can move it up the chain if you want to if you wanted to try to put things in in a perspective but really i think what we're seeing is a perfect opportunity to expose exactly what we know has been going on is that these lying snakes in the deep state they're trying to artificially inflame narratives fabricate narratives all together so so that they can create more divide, more divide in the race, more divide in religion, uh, more divide in the LGBTQ and, you know, straight communities, anything they can to obstruct. We're seeing campaign after campaign, initiative after initiative to try and start this uh, race war, this civil war, the holy wars. Pick your pick your poison, okay? Uh, this is all part of it. I think we need to wake up and I think we should, uh, we should start waking other people up to what's going on and this is a great place to start just let them know how we are conditioned over time and the things they do the small and big things they do to create dangerous scenarios okay this could have sparked a race war this could have sparked um this could have been very dangerous who knows what this could have set off okay who knows what this could have ignited uh let's take that in consideration next time somebody else is espousing something let's we'll dig a little deeper hopefully uh, believe it or not, I'm happy with the way this turned out. Uh, I'm happy that he's being exposed because really what I care about is the truth, but I'm happy that people might start to look at things another way. I know it'll be very slow. I know there's a lot of people out there who have to fight a lot of cognitive dissonance, but slowly but surely, we will get more and more on our side. Let's keep up the fight. California Carter, signing off.